We've done adding, subtracting, and multiplying so far. Now we're going to look at dividing. Dividing adds non-permissible values, so it's a little bit more complex. Again, notation-wise, you can write it like this. You can write it like this. I've also seen it while well, you can write it. This is probably the one you're most comfortable with. I've also seen it written like this. So you have to be ready for any of those notations. Either the functions with the x, which is easier, or the functions without the x with the x afterwards. So what is the value of this? Close. What do we do? We take f of 2, which is 2, and divide it by g of 2, which is negative 1. 2 divided by negative 1 is negative 2. So again, you can find out nice points, but with dividing, you also have to consider where the function on the bottom is equal to 0. So in this case, the function on the bottom is equal to 0 at 1, and that's going to either turn into an asymptote or a whole, a non-permissible value. Again, nice points to figure out. I would always look where the function on the top, this case is f of x, where it's equal to 0, because 0 divided by anything is 0. That's going to stay the same. I would also look where my two graphs intersect. So you can see that your blue and your red graph intersect right there. If they're the same number, they're going to equal 1. And other than that, finding a bunch of nice points. We know that this is going to be an asymptote and not a whole, partially because only one of the functions is equal to 0 there. We don't have 0 divided by 0. That's what happens when a hole appears. And as the blue graph gets smaller and smaller, dividing by a very small number means that your value is going to get very big. And so you have your graph approaching an asymptote, either going up forever to positive infinity or down forever towards negative infinity. So the domain of our functions, the red graph is x is bigger than or equal to 2. The blue graph was everything, but then our new function is going to be the overlap of the domains, plus you have to take out the non-permissible value. So our new domain here, there's your overlap, plus you have to take out the value where it's non-permissible. So let's look at example 2. f of x is the square root of x, and g of x is x minus 2, domain and range of both. So the domain of f of x is that x has to be bigger than or equal to 0, because you can't take the square root of a negative. And the range. Right, there's a quick little sketch of our square root graph, and we know what that looks like. For g of x, the domain and range is everything. Now, given q of x is f of x divided by g of x, we want to write an explicit equation. So again, our explicit equation, 
That's where you divide things and just write it in terms of x. So we have f of x on top, g of x on the bottom. And we're going to try to determine the domain and range for this graph. Now, for the domain, you know that the domain is going to be the overlap. So the overlap between the two domains means that it has to be bigger than or equal to 0, plus do we have any non-permissible values? x cannot equal 2. So x has to be bigger than or equal to 0, and x cannot equal 2. Now, if you started plugging in some values here, right, we know that the smallest it can be is 0, so we may as well start with 0. You're going to get 0 there. What are some other nice points that you could plug in? You could plug in 4. This will be 2 divided by 2, 4 comma 1. 1 would be a nice point. You would have 1 divided by a negative 1. Next nice point would probably be 9, and then you would get 3 on the top and 7 on the bottom. Sorry, but you get three sevens. And we get an interesting looking graph. Now for the most part at this, for a range of this, they're not going to ask you on a complicated graph. I'm going to show you, we're going to pull out our calculators here and look exactly what this graph looks like based on the points that we've drawn so far, is it hard to tell the range? What's going to happen as x gets really, really big? It's going to get close to 0. But how, is this the lowest it ever gets? Is this the biggest it ever gets? How do we know? Oh yeah, this doesn't work anymore. So we have our calculator. We can clear out the graph that we have. So entering that graph into our calculator and pushing graph. We've got the points that we had before. We have our asymptote there. So this part is going down towards the asymptote. This part is going up towards the asymptote. And there appears to be an asymptote here as well, but we do have 0, 0 touching that point. So in, when we figure out our complete range on this one, the range is everything. Again, the range is a little bit tricky because sometimes you need to have a graphing calculator to find it out. So that part generally doesn't show up on the exam. They're more interested in, can you figure out the domain? Do you know that the domains overlap? And with dividing, you also have to add in your non-permissible values. So questions for practice for this one are 6, 13, and 16.